So on the back of the zombie notes, we have a couple examples with the answers already there. So that could be helpful as well. But if I look at my first example and take a pH of 7.23, I have to give it a first name, a middle name, and a last name. Now the thing I look at first was the pH, so we just did that, 7.23. If I go to the other side of my chart and look at the pH and decide which side is it on, is it between 7.35 and 7.45? No, it is on the lower side. It is lower than normal. And low pH will lead us to an acidosis condition. And we also said 7.23 was lower than normal, so the first name will be uncompensated. The, mid, the last name actually is acidosis because it was a low pH. A low pH did give us an acidosis. So we actually get the first name and the last name right away. We had an abnormal pH, 7.23, and the number was low, 7.23, so it is acidosis. And now we have to decide whether it is a pulmonary or a metabolic problem. So what do I have to look for? I have to look for the CO2 and the bicarb. Now on this example of 7.23 pH, the CO2 is 33 and the bicarb is 10. Okay, so I'm not so sure what's going on here. This is a little complicated, but let's take it slow. So 7.23 we decided was uncompensated acidosis. Let's pick out the PCO2, the CO2 first, 33. Okay, let's go back to my chart and see if that will help us. 33 is not normal. Normal is 35 to 45. So it is low. And low actually gives you a respiratory alkalosis. But we just named this pH respiratory acidosis, did we not? But this tells us it is certainly not the lungs that are causing the respiratory acidosis because there's not a lot of respiratory acid, acid going on. We have a low CO2. So something's happening in the lungs, and I bet you it's helping the situation. So this is a really good example we're using. Let's take a look at the bicarb now and see if that answers our question of who's causing the uncompensated acidosis. The bicarb is 10. Now I remember right off the bat normal is 22 to 27. This is very low, 10. So if I look at my metabolic base, the normal is here, it says 23 to 27. The low number that I have is 10. 10 on the low side would give us a metabolic acidosis, exactly what we're looking for. What caused the acidosis? It is an uncompensated metabolic acidosis. That's the diagnosis we got for that pH. So uncompensated metabolic acidosis. I could think of what my patients might, you know, have going on. I could think of diabetic ketoacidosis. I could think of some maybe uh, shock states. So we can, you know, talk about that as well, what causes it and how to treat it. Treating a metabolic acidosis would certainly be treating the cause, and I imagine we'd have to give this patient bicarb. And if it was a diabetic, we'd have to treat the insulin, or treat with insulin um, and bicarb and fluids. Okay, so that was a uncompensated metabolic acidosis. But remember that respiratory component? The, resp the CO2 was low. So in an acidotic atmosphere, the lungs were saying, I have to get rid of CO2. So this diabetic ketoacidosis, I could just picture it on my head. I could see this patient having like cosmal breathings, shallow but rapid respiratory rate to get rid of the respiratory acid or CO2. So this is a perfect condition of the body, a perfect example, excuse me, of the, of the lungs trying to compensate 
for metabolic condition. It hasn't done it yet though, so we cannot call it a compensated acidosis. It is still uncompensated metabolic acidosis. So that was one example. I bet you another example will get you on your way to understanding arterial blood gas interpretation. Let's take a look at 7.55. Remember, look at the pH first, and let's name that pH. 7.55. 7.55 is, ooh, on the other side, it is high, which gives us an alkalosis. Abnormal and high. First name, uncompensated. Last name, a high pH, gives you alkalosis. We have an uncompensated alkalosis. Let's see who caused the alkalosis. So in the second example, the CO2 is 25 and the bicarb is 22. 22 is normal, isn't it? So it's probably going to be a respiratory problem. So 38 on my chart helps me. 38, normal CO2 is 35 to 45. Okay. Sorry, CO2 is the CO2 is 25. So let's see if this causes our problem. So I'll go to my chart and I'll look at the CO2 of 25. Normal is 35 to 45. This is a low CO2. Um, not enough CO2 will give us a respiratory alkalosis. So our um, bicarb at 7.55 is an uncompensated alkalosis and who caused the alkalosis? The CO2 of 25 gives us an alkalosis. So yes, it is a respiratory alkalosis, uncompensated respiratory alkalosis. Now the CO2 is normal, so the lungs haven't tried to retain any CO2 yet to compensate. And what you need to know is that the kidneys take quite some time to compensate. The lungs do it like that though. So this is um, a problem that hasn't been fixed. And if I go further on looking at this patient's numbers, we know that um, his PO2 and his SAT is low also. So that's another thing that we have to treat this patient for. But that's how we play this arterial blood gas game. We look at the pH first to give it its first name and last name, whether it's normal or not. So compensated is normal, uncompensated is not normal. And then we go to see what the pH is low, it's acidosis. If the pH is high, it's alkalosis. And then we do the next step is looking at the CO2 and the bicarb to see who caused the problem and perhaps if there's somebody, one of the components trying to fix the problem. So we look at the CO2, low CO2 will give us respiratory alkalosis, high CO2, respiratory acidosis, and the bicarb 23 to 27. Not enough bicarb around will give us metabolic alkalosis. I'm sorry, um, not enough bicarb around or base gives us acidosis. See, it is confusing. And too much base gives you metabolic alkalosis. But if you have the zombie notes, you can see that practice will certainly um, help us doing arterial blood gas interpretation. And remember, look at the pH first, because if you look at the other two components first, it will be even more confusing. It's the pH that you have to name first and find out who's causing it and perhaps who's compensating. So I hope that's helped you with interpreting arterial blood gases. And if you have any questions, you can go to michellekunz.com and ask any questions you have about it, okay? Thank you for your time. I hope this helps.